So I have got a massive amount of deep cleaning motivation for you today. We're doing both bathrooms and as you can see this clean is long overdue. So if you're a fan of watching grubby things made sparkly again, stick around because we've got lots to do. I've noticed with a lot of cleaning videos, things already seem quite clean when they start. But that's just not me unfortunately. Things can get a bit gross here. So first I took all of the bath toys and put them into the bath and now I'm taking the shower curtain down because I like to bleach it. I know a lot of people say just put it in the washing machine but I don't find that as effective. Anyway, before the bleach I'm going to soak it in a bit of Milton with the bath toys. And then we're going to start on this nightmare. Where do I even start? The sink is completely blocked because my son was playing with these wax body painting crayons. And when it came to washing it off, I didn't realise he'd done this, but he scraped it all off himself into the sink. Added in a load of tissues too, just to top it off. And I'm sure there's a load of other stuff down there as well. So I had everything crossed that the Mr Muscle worked and we didn't have to get a plumber around. But yeah, that's why the sink looks so grimy, it's wax paint. And now that the floor and the surfaces are clear, by the way I have no excuses for that mess. Sometimes chaos just happens in this house, especially in the bathrooms. But now that that's done, we can get to the good stuff. I was just trying to salvage some of the bath toys here. Personally, I don't like any bath toys that water can get into. But Charlie bought these for the boys. They're all vehicles and Ike's going through a bit of an obsession at the minute. So I thought I'll squeeze some Milton into them, then some bleach and see if they're mould free. If not, they're going in the bin. But anyway, when I say this is the good stuff, it's because I absolutely hate tidying, but I love a good deep clean. To me, there is absolutely nothing worse than picking up the same mess over and over again. But cleaning something dirty, oh, love it. And living with three boys, there's always something dirty to clean or some drain to unblock. And I won't lie, 90% of the time, Charlie's the main culprit. It's all well and good falling for the big curly haired bloke at work until you're pulling chunks of his hair out of every single drain in the house. I wouldn't have it any other way though. He's absolutely beautiful inside and out. Anyway, here I was waiting for the moment of truth and luckily the second round of Mr Muscle did the trick. If you've got a sensitive stomach, scroll to 2 minutes 35. But if you're gross like me, look at this. So disgusting. Someone had stuffed some dental floss down there. It wasn't dissolving so I had to pull it out. Yes, it was glove free and I know that's horrible for some people but I wouldn't have been able to get a good grip with the marigolds on. I really struggle getting along with the big bulky gloves. I hate the way that they feel. I like to use the latex ones that are like tight to your skin so you can actually feel what you're doing. But I didn't have any left when I did this bathroom. So the only time I did wear them when I was doing this bathroom was whenever I was dealing with bleach. I know people can be funny about germs and no gloves but I washed my hands thoroughly after I did this clean and I wasn't walking around picking my nose or shoving my fingers in my mouth during so... <laughs> Obviously, when dealing with cleaning products and doing bathroom cleans or kitchen cleans, I would always recommend gloves, obviously, if you can tolerate them. Because the skin's the body's largest organ and it absorbs everything that's put onto it. But yeah, I just wanted to talk about that a little bit because I always get comments about gloves. And the explanation is I've got some weird sensory issues going on, is what it is. Look how much better that sink looks now. This Sephora bathroom spray smells like grandmas and flower shops did in the 90s. It's got that really comforting vintagey smell to it. It's not particularly my favourite smell, but I really like the nostalgic feel it gives me. Just thought I'd put that out there in case anyone was thinking of buying it. Also, how weird is it thinking of the 90s as vintage? But it was 30 years ago now. Crazy. Good old life, eh? Anyway, this voiceover is taking me longer than I expected because the dreaded sickness bug has hit the house. So I'm having to stop and start and do bits and bobs when I can. And if the voiceover seems a bit disjointed, that'll be why. It's going around my eldest school, but only my youngest has come down with it so far. So I spent all my time with him on my knee, giving him lots of cuddles and lots of milk. And he's been feeling very sorry for himself, bless him. And now it's basically just a waiting game to see who else in the house it floors. It was absolutely disastrous last year. I actually did a TikTok about it. It was one of the first TikToks I ever did. And it's actually in my long form videos here. It's called Cleaning After a Sickness Bug and it's the first ever video I posted here. But oh my, it was awful. The boys got it first and got over it and me and Charlie thought we'd escaped it. Ooh, how wrong were we? <laughs> and basically what happened is we both suddenly woke up in the middle of the night, one with the poos and the other throwing up everywhere. Neither had the time to make it to different bathrooms. <laughs> so I'll let you fill in the blanks there, but it wasn't a pleasant image. 
Definitely bonded us as a couple, though. Yeah, it's really funny, because that was the TikTok that made me go viral over there, this time last year. It was the first time I actually sat down and did a voiceover over one of my cleaning videos, because before that I was so shy and I just didn't dare. And that was the moment I thought, you know what, I can actually do this and I find it really, really enjoyable. And other people seem to too. So that sickness bug's probably the reason I'm sat here today doing this voiceover right now. Anyway, I don't know if you noticed what I was doing with the shower curtain there because I was just rambling away. But this is why I like to wash it by hand rather than in the washing machine. You might have to scroll back a little to see what I'm talking about. But it was a magnetic shower curtain. It has these little pockets where the magnets used to go in. And obviously being damp so often, mould just forms in those little pockets really easily. And yes, I could just buy another shower curtain, but I've got better things to be spending my money on. As I said in another video, I'm saving up to do driving lessons, and we're also trying to get a deposit on a house, so... I'm happy to give it a good scrub for the time being, rather than replace it. Anyway, I've got a new video series lined up. For anyone who really loved when I went to go and clean my auntie's house, I'll be cleaning my dad's house very soon. Now, my dad is a lot like me. He's very creative and very artistic, and he's always got some kind of project on the go. On top of that, he also works shifts. So he spends what little free time he has on his artwork, and the mess kind of piles up there. And I don't blame him. I know which one I'd rather be doing after shift work. I'd rather be doing something I'm passionate about and that makes me feel purposeful and fulfilled, rather than just going to work, cleaning and sleeping. Nah. So I'm going to go and sort it for him and make it all cosy again. It'll probably have a few parts to it because there's a lot to tackle. But I love a challenge and I find it a lot easier to clean other people's houses. So keep your eyes peeled for that. This is something I hope to do more of when I get my driving lessons. Go and help people that really need help with cleaning their houses. And that don't necessarily have the free change to pay for a cleaner. Times are tough and I'm more than happy to help people for free. The only thing I'd ask for is to be able to film it and add to my video portfolio because I know all too well how fast mess can just creep up on you. I said it on the video where I was cleaning my auntie's house. And thanks to you guys supporting this channel and the channel growing so fast, I'm now well on the way to be able to do that because being in the partner programmes now allowed me to save up for these kind of things. There was no possible way in the situation I was before YouTube that I would have been able to save up any money. We were living from paycheck to paycheck. And I'm just so thrilled and so thankful. And I can't wait to see what happens next and take you along for the journey too. Anyway, whilst I've been stopping and starting this voiceover, I've also been filming the tidy up of the aftermath of the sickness bug. Washing all the bedding and the blankets, just disinfecting everything. And it's absolutely bloody boiling too. Sod's law, isn't it? Kids go back to school, pick up a sickness bug and a heat wave comes along. Just a dog in the background there, sorry about that. But yeah, poor Ike, bless him. I got the pool out and everything. Because for the majority of the summer holidays, it has been absolutely pouring it down. Then it does get warm again and he's too ill to play outside, bless him. I do not like September heat waves though. I always find the last few weeks of August tricks you into feeling this autumny vibe. I start getting in the mood for hot chocolates and watching Practical Magic. And then boom, sunny again. I don't know. If reverse seasonal affective disorder is a thing, I have it. But yeah, now it's time for the bleaching of the shower curtain and I'm going to see if these bath toys are salvageable. Started filling them up with the bleach, giving them a good shake and a squeeze. And every time I squeezed them, more mould was just coming out and honestly, it's just not worth the risk to me. So I had a little chat with Charlie and we decided it was best to just throw them in the bin. It's a shame though, because they were lovely. And now that shower curtain's soaking, we're going to bleach the floor. And as you can see, it's revolting! Daddy long legs there, the bane of my life, laying leather jackets into our lawn all the time. Not going to disturb him though, he's just there living his life. But yeah, I think our bathroom floors get so mucky so quickly because the boys are constantly splashing water when they're having a bath. And I'm not going to lie, when it's been one of those hectic days and you're just trying to get them out of the bath and into bed, I'm not coming in to dry the floor. I'm either passing out myself or I'm going to sit down and stuff my face and finally watch something that isn't Hey Dougie. Because as much as I love Hey Dougie, after the 50th episode in the row, it's a bit nauseating. So yeah, I end up just chucking a towel on the wet patches and, <laughs> and hoping for the best. Sometimes you've just got to preserve what's left of your energy and fill your cup again. So I pick my battles when it comes to silly messes around the house like that. Otherwise, those little things can just build up and things as simple as the kids just having fun and splashing water can end up with you completely losing your temper. And it's not fair on them or on you. 
That's not to say I haven't overreacted once or twice before. We're only human, aren't we? And sometimes these things just get the better of you. And that's no surprise when you have a constant to-do list and then unnecessary things just keep getting piled on top of it. But yeah, I think it's important as parents and as partners just to learn how to apologise. It doesn't make you any less credible in your kids' eyes. It makes you human and relatable. And no matter who you are, if you're wrong, you're wrong. And if you've overreacted, you've overreacted. To me, that's not a sign of weakness in parenting at all. It's a sign of strength. Factoring in partners as well. Since being with Charlie, because I feel so comfortable around him and he's my safe place, he kind of gets the raw end of the deal when it comes to my emotions. You know, like when they say a child holds it all together at school and then the second they come through the front door, they break down and all of the emotions come out because they're with their mum and they feel free to do so. I find I can be like that with Charlie after a long day. After holding it all in and regulating my emotions for the kids, the second they fall asleep, I can end up being a bit of a brat myself. And that's that room done. And the next toilet is just as bad. Loads of mushrooms, hair all over the floor. Lovely. Bits of old food. Let's get it sorted. But yeah, thank goodness Charlie's cool and collected and loves me for me. Because I do not hold any part of myself back in this relationship. In any other relationship I've had in the past, I always ended up censoring myself and trying to be the most palatable version of myself I could possibly be. So that they'd approve of me and think I was really cool and laid back absolutely never again because not only does that not work if someone doesn't want to stick around they don't want to stick around but if someone doesn't love every single part of you they're not worth having in the first place and who wants to spend their entire relationship never breaking down and never expressing their fears and things that annoy them so I won't lie I am completely and utterly high maintenance when it comes to Charlie not in a materialistic way and I wouldn't even call it high maintenance although I think some men would Just that I have very high standards now. I know how I deserve to be treated and I won't tolerate anything less. Ultimately, it's all about knowing your worth and value and what you bring to the table, isn't it? And if you set your standards high, the person who's right for you will rise to meet them. I used to be such a passive people-pleasing person, especially in relationships. I'd never rock the boat even if I was screaming internally. And I don't know, I just think women give so much in their relationships, they deserve to have that effort matched and that energy returned. And I always said to myself, after my relationship with my first son's uh, dad ended, it's going to take someone so amazing to make me settle down again. I remember writing a list as a teen, I was probably around 16, 17, and I'd been really strung along by this lad I thought was my soulmate, and I'd reached my rock bottom. Rock bottom at that point in my life anyway. (laughs) But yeah, I reached a point that I finally realised that he didn't like me in the same way that I liked him and there was nothing that I could do to change it and that he was just going to keep stringing me along for a rainy day if I continued to let him. I was really into the law of attraction and manifestation at the time and I remember sitting there one day and writing a list of all of the qualities that I wanted in a man and then burying it in the garden so that it could seed. Funny, I was talking about the movie Practical Magic earlier. But do you remember that scene, that true love spell that she casts, where she lists that her true love will have one green eye and one blue and that he can flip pancakes in the air. And then all of those years later, she meets that exact man. Well, I met my exact man too. And honestly, it makes me well up thinking about it. All of the circumstances and life events and heartbreak that led up to us being in the same place at the right time. My heart could burst. (laughs) He truly is my dream man. Even if he does plug up all the drains with his hair. Anyway, that was a massive rumble and I've barely spoken about cleaning. But if you've stuck around this long, I like to think that you're here for the chats and the rambles too. You know, I don't just make these videos for the sake of explaining the cleaning process. I like to get vulnerable and have a good heart to heart while we tackle the stuff that needs to be tackled. And I really do appreciate that you've taken the time out of your day to watch for this long. I know there's a good few of you now who watch every video and comment every time. And I just wanted you to know that I see you and I appreciate all of your lovely comments, even if I'm not able to respond as much as I'd like to. Now, look at this gross mess behind the toilet. We have a little leak going on behind there. In classic me, I haven't gotten around to getting anyone out to sort it yet. So if you're wondering why behind the toilet looks extra bad, that's why. So first we're going to go in with some pink stuff anti-backdrops. And then after that, we're going to go over it with some bleach. I found one singular latex glove hiding in the cleaning cupboard when I did this bathroom. So I used that for the bleach parts. Ugh, it looks so disgusting. But to me, it's the most satisfying clean of the whole video. 
Had to hold the camera, aka my phone, by hand here though. So apologies if the footage is a bit bumpy. Because this room is so small, I can't always fit my little tripod in to get a good camera angle. So yeah, got to do what you've got to do, haven't you? There's something really therapeutic about washing the floors by hand, especially in the bathroom. I don't know what it is, but just swiping the grime away. You can't do that with a mop. Anyway, as I'm filming the last bit of this voiceover, it is currently quarter to 11 at night where I am. Everyone else is asleep and there's an annoying little moth fluttering about in the window. <laughs> a lot of the time when I'm filming these voiceovers, everybody else in the house is asleep. It's the only time of day where I get that time to just sit with my thoughts and ramble on and let things just flow out of me. When I make these videos and the voiceovers, it's to help other people but also to help myself. It doubles up as a kind of diary for me. And because we've had that sickness bug, my health anxiety is going absolutely crazy and I feel pretty terrible at the minute. Whenever my children are sick, I catastrophize, and I turn simple childhood bugs into worst case scenarios. So to be able to sit and get things off my chest and talk to like-minded people too. People who I know will get something valuable out of these videos. I find it really, really helpful. And I want to thank you for listening along and I really, really hope that it's helped you too. In whatever way that might be. Whether it's purely for the cleaning motivation, for the voiceovers or both. I'm glad you're here. And now we've just got to finish off cleaning the toilet and then we'll start with the finishing touches. We have a bit of lime scale that I just can't touch with the toilet brush. So I'm going to use one of those dissolvable fizzy things and hope that does the trick. I love when it all bubbles up, it just looks so clean. And then we'll put some lovely smellies in. The last of my summer ones before I start using my cinnamon and my apple scents. Because I refuse to believe this heat's going to last much longer. I'm going to bring everything back in and light a candle. And we're all done and looking lovely and I'll catch you in the next one. Have a great rest of your day.